Look around. The world is tottering, and almost everyone has been quarantined. New York is on the brink of desolation, with most of states having shut down nearly everything because COVID-19 is extremely contagious. What would happen if someone close to you, a family member, tested positive for COVID-19? What would you do? You would rush them to a hospital, scrambling to get them to safety, only to find that the very people who you are trusting your loved one to are on the front lines, completely ill-equipped, and in desperate need of our help. The healthcare workers who find themselves on the front lines of the battle against COVID-19 are working tirelessly in efforts against the virus. However, being on the front lines means putting their own lives and their families' lives in danger. The stock of PPE in the United States and worldwide has reached an all-time low due to the high demand brought on by the pandemic. Personal protection equipment, masks, N95s, gloves, and respirators, also known as PPE, is a necessary precaution for these healthcare, for these healthcare workers and safety so that they are able to treat the patients who have contracted COVID-19. My father is one of those healthcare professionals. And for the past month, I have witnessed the great length he has gone through in order to pursue more PPE at, at his hospital. I have worked with him on gathering common household materials to help create new masks with an acquaintance who has been able to 3D print, 3D print a skeleton of these masks. Even looking at the news, I've seen how in need all the hospitals are of PPE, especially masks. The current economic and medical situation is dire. There's a need for PPE at hospitals everywhere, and most everyone has some free time with the rising need to quarantine. Volunteering to help produce masks or any other PPE at home is another healthcare professional protected, ready to save the lives of our fellow Americans. Our country has found that we are unprepared for this virus as officials are scrambling for solutions. However, there is an opportunity for those who find themselves at home to help push us through this pandemic. While it is common knowledge that our country is severely lacking PPE, the cause of the shortage proved to be less known. The PPE in hospitals right now falls is falling drastically due to the nece necessity to follow Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, regulations, which state that improvised masks are not PPE on uh, April 3rd, 2020. This has proven to be difficult for the medical field as they quickly burn through regulated factory masks that are one-time use. If hospitals choose to reuse PPE, it is only because they've experienced incredible loss of life and supply and are struggling to provide for their workers. According to the Centers for Disease and for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, on uh, April 29, 2020, reusing masks is not approved for routine contamination as it can decrease the effectiveness of the mask. I witnessed this in my own home as it has become a regular thing for my father to reuse the same mask from a previous week to help conserve supplies, something that was previously not heard of in the medical field. Although it is common knowledge that there is a severe shortage in the medical field for PPE, there has also originated a new obstacle in this pandemic, hoarding. People are buying an excessive amount of PPE and refuse to aid in the relief effort. Instead, these people buy out as much stock as possible and then illegally sell it to medical centers at outrageous and inflated prices. Neil Victor of New York Times reports on a man who has hoarded nearly a million medical grades masks and gloves on uh, April 2nd, 2020. These resources were enough to supply an entire hospital in the New York area. Think about what would have happened if this man had donated these resources. The risk of infection for those on the front lines would have been drastically reduced. The PP in the U.S. is in dire straits with most hospitals, the epicenters of the pandemic, becoming impoverished with PP. Many are wondering the reasons for this, but it is simply the overwhelming of hospitals all around which become full with infectious patients. This is causing the hospitals to not only need to worry about PPE, but switching out more often and going back and forth from patients with the virus to patients with other illnesses. The NCOV 2019 website, a website that updates live on the current COVID-19 COVID web situation worldwide, currently updated on May 7th, 2020, reports a number of nearly 2.3 million COVID patients worldwide. This warrants the use of at least thousands of different PPE every day. However, because of the time that COVID patients must stay in a hospital of critical, around 2% or 50,000 people are critical, our health, our health professionals are required to use much more PPE. According to the World Health Organization, on March 3rd, 2020, the number of medical grade masks used per month is 89 million, a little more than 2 million each day. The WHO has also concluded that the rising need for PPE equipment has caused the price to double or even increase by sixfold 
making it much more difficult to have our country running our hospitals properly. Not only America, but the world is in danger of the virus because the rapid expenditure of PPE equipment, thus causing professionals to reuse contaminated PPE in order to try and stay safe. Yet, there is a way we can all help out in these times by volunteering our time to the cause. There is a way to help out and give back to those who are helping the nation survive. Donating helps, but not near as much as creating your own PPE. Time Magazine has found that a hospital in Washington on March 18th, 2020, has started creating PPE out of office supplies and other run-of-the-mill materials. If medical professionals have created masks and other PPE out of everyday items, shouldn't the Americans who are stuck at home also have the ability to make equipment? I have worked with my father on gathering the materials to create 34 reusable masks for his hospital. They were created out of easy-to-find materials such as shoelaces, air filters, and rubber lining for suction. This was added onto a skeleton of a mask created by 3D printing, taking only 17 hours to create each skeleton. We found that if needed, the community would participate in using all their power with 3D printers to generate masks for the local hospital. If we have the ability to work on this together in a small town, then why not the whole of the United States? If we have people who own 3D printers who make skeletons, the general population could gather and build the materials and we could collectively aid in recre recreating the PPE and helping your healthcare workers. Now that most everyone has free time now because of the quarantine, we can attempt that. We can attempt to use that time for giving back to our frontline professionals and help them save their loved ones in need. So take up a stand, find some tutorials on how to create masks and other PPE, and start creating in your free time to help our country, our collective family. After all, if healthcare workers continue, their, continue in their desperation for protection, who are you going to look for when someone close to you contracts the virus?